Hello everybody, this is Thomas J. Barkowski. Just wanted to show you guys my ProQuest 3 practice using the Oldham. I'm new to Oldham. I'm using the Wesley Dong World's Top 5 deck with a couple changes. Loading into the first game, we have Dromai. Typically when I play Dromai, they're very long games and I have to prioritize their dragons. If I don't take care of the dragons, they will just kill me because I can only swing once, maybe twice and the dragons can overrun the board. So you see I take out a couple non-poppers and I throw in some Tink Belows and some Oasis. And my goal here is to uh, pop and kill as many dragons as possible. So we have a unique loadout here for Dromai that got Mage Master Boots and the Crown. This game is very sped up because they were a very, very slow player. So I don't know if they're just trying out Dromai or if they're new to Talishar, but it was taking long. So my goal here is to apply some pressure and to get rid of some non poppers but I, I'm, I really want to keep the poppers especially for the second cycle in the late game when they start getting out a lot of ash wings and a lot of different dragons and my goal is to kill them before they kill me if i just try to smack them in the face and avoid the ash wings and avoid the different dragons uh, it feels really good for the first few turns and then they have their board state and you can have 20 25 30 life and you just get overwhelmed and die just like when facing Prism. And all those little auras come in for one apiece over a few turns, that turns out to be a lot and you die. So we just keep trying to hit them here. Trying to keep all my poppers, not blocking with poppers, blocking with other cards. We have a bunch of reds here, so we swing the whale, not frosty. All right, they're blocking Ravenous Ravel here. They're not creating like any ash. This is turn three, so this is very strange for Dromite play. Uh, so I suspect they're just newer. Just trying to pick up the hero for the first couple times and trying to figure it out. He tries to bring out a dragon, I'm gonna pop it. I would have liked to keep that Endless Winter to do an Endless Winter Fused here. I have all the cards and resources needed. I crown a seeds trying to get another popper, it doesn't work. So then I just throw the Endless Winter in front of it, it pops, he doesn't have Phantasmal Footsteps, so that ends his turn. Alright, I throw out the channel just to make him a little more resource intensive, because he's running Dromai, he has lots of reds, so paying that extra cost is very detrimental. And then we're going to swing the whale, being pretty aggressive here, getting rid of that second ice card, instead of keeping it for the next cycle and pitching it away to keep out Channel Lake Frigid. see their block you see they have uprising in there and enigma chimera some odd choices well at least in my opinion i don't play dromai but those seem odd so then they tried to play a dragon that costs one they have one resource to pitch but channel lake is out so of course that dragon costs two i tell them that in the chat they think about it for a few seconds take their turn back now they could have pitched that dragon to pop epot to gave them some resources and play yonder eye if that's really what they wanted but instead they just decided to go to end of turn in Arsenal. All right, so we're gonna try to swing pretty big here. The Zealous Belting, pitching the Macho Grande gives it go again. So we have five go again. And then we have the resources to come in with the Command and Conquer. So that would be a 11 point turn. We're only gonna pitch one ice card though. So that would keep, um, that would not keep Channel Lake around. It would explode. So he blocks with a sink below. I'm not sure why I crowned there, but I was looking for something. And then they just go ahead and quit. So we're going to go ahead and jump into the next game. And of course we have Kano. A lot of people are playing Kano. A lot of people are playing Icelander. So I'm going to take out the CNCs because honestly CNC is worthless against Kano. Because if you threaten a CNC against their arsenal, they're just going to go into Kano mode and go ham with um, all their instants, and I throw in three Oasis. Oasis are absolutely key. My goal here is to play Kano very slow, preventing as much Arcane as I can, but always keeping an Oasis for Spite, and always keeping a resource to activate Oasis. If some other damage leaks through, that doesn't bother me very much if they're getting one or two damage off of a, a Spindle, or a Scolding Rain, or just whatever they throw at me, maybe a sap or a prognostic, 
and I take one or two, that's totally fine because the way that Kano has always killed me is they go into the Aether Wildfire into an attack. Doesn't matter what wizard attack it is, anyone is fine. One, two, three, four um, damage. And then they pop Blazing. So if I can nullify Aether Wildfire, I will severely increase my chances of winning. So we're just playing it very slow, swinging when I can. Uh, swinging is going to cost me four resources, so if I have less than six resources, I will not swing. I'll just pass priority and arsenal will go to end of turn. But I have my oasis there, so I'm going to play very slow. He's going to try to chip damage me to set up his turns. I'm not concerned about going under 34 health because my number one priority is to eliminate their Aether Wildfire. So this is a very slow game, passing a lot of priority, chipping away at him, he's chipping away at me. I draw a lot of reds in the beginning, so I try to get rid of those reds. I want as many reds out of the deck as, as quick as possible, so I have lots of blues. It's already a blue heavy deck, but you can never go wrong with having more arcane barrier um, with those blues. All right, yep, so he's attacking me here, making sure to keep one resource. Passing priority to go to end of turn. He's gonna Kano. Like I definitely would take some damage here to keep that one resource to hit him with that Oasis for Spite in case he wants to Aether Wildfire me. So 33 health is, is not, you know, a big issue. I take that Scalding Rain there instead of giving up my resource. Well, actually, I do take it because he's out of cards, so you can't play the Aether, so I'm like, that's fine. And then on my turn, we have a couple reds, so we swing heavy. Okay, Endless Winter. Endless Winter is not the best card against Kano, but it definitely forces them to either A, block, or B, go into Kano mode. Typically, if they go into Kano mode, then the effect doesn't really matter. They'll just take A to the face and then try to chip you back with some damage. And then on their turn, they have no cards, so if they play or activate Kano, they don't get a Frostbite because they have no cards. So they pass priority, the effect goes away. Luckily for me, I was able to draw back-to-back -back hands of Endless Winter, so I, I went ahead and swung it, keeping a resource to do Oasis in case they Kano into an Aether Wildfire. Very, very long game here. Yep, always making sure I'll take some damage just to keep that resource so I can activate that Aether Wildfire. They have Singe in their deck. I thought that was a unique um, card to have in their main board against Oldham. Probably should have sideboarded that out, but uh, maybe they don't have their sideboard up or they're still new to Kano or practicing Kano. So I figure I throw out the channel here. I don't play channel a lot. I usually pitch it, but I threw it out there just so if they Kano, of course it costs one more resource. And then when they attack, it costs one more resource. So it kind of shuts them down. And my goal is to keep this channel out for as long as possible. Most matches I just pitch it. I don't play it too much with this kind of uh, aggressive Oldham build. So I make sure I keep my ice cards, pistol ice cards to swing sledge. I'm more comfortable doing that with few resources because I have the channel out. And of course I have enough resources here to do both of my oasis or at least one. But they can only do one thing, they pass. Now I have three oasis. So I'm feeling pretty good because no matter what they do they can't kill me if I have through Oasis. Uh, for some reason here I have a mental lapse and I choose to crown a seeds and then I took the damage and then I crowned so I took the damage anyway when I could have prevented it and I got rid of my Oasis so that was kind of a, a funky play by me. I would definitely classify that as a misplay. Now we're just going to try to prevent some damage. He, he spindles there for four. I can only prevent three. I don't care if I take one. I have 26 health. It's not a big deal. As long as I don't hit that big wombo combo, I'm going to survive. Keep chipping away at Kano. So that's what I keep doing. Try to get rid of these reds. Uh, Spinal Crush. I'm almost never going to use it against Kano, but I don't have a better sideboard option um, to put in there. So we're just really going to pitch that or maybe play that like turn zero is the hope, I guess. So I just take one so I can keep my Spinal Crush so I can pitch it to do that. Now I had the second Oasis so I get rid of one of them. Uh, I'm digging there for a blue. 
didn't work. I got the pummel. So I throw the Oasis in the arsenal. And there it's going to stay for the rest of the game. Try to chip some damage. He's got it. We're getting pretty close to the end game here. He either has to do a crazy turn and kill me. Or he's just going to die. This deck's starting to thin out. He's running out of reds. Um, so he still has that wombo combo in there though. He did block with an Aether earlier. But uh, everything else is fair game. Alright, now we got a whole bunch of blues here. So this is perfect. Because I have a lot of resources to go into Arcane and to do the Oasis. And I have a lot of resources to swing Sledge. Uh, he's going into a really long Kano combo. I thought for sure this is where he's going to pull off the Aether Wildfire into some other attack into Ragamuffins for Blazing. But um, he does not. Luckily I have the blues to block out. Now we're going to swing Sledge. He's going to do some Kanoing. He doesn't find what he wants. Okay, I block three. Have two resources floating so I can do an Oasis. He's not going to block so he takes six to the face to go to one life. So he doesn't have much to kill me so he passes. So of course I threaten lethal. And he has to kill me right now or block this out and try again next turn. But if he blocks it out he'll need three cards or he will two cards and his tunic trigger. So he's going to go into Kano mode. He accidentally undid the turn there so I just re-attacked with Crush the Weak. He's going to go Kano Kano. And right now he knows he needs that combo. He blocks his, he blows up Storm Strider. So if he doesn't hit that combo, he's dead. I have the Oasis in the arsenal this whole time. So it's pointless. He does all this mumbo jumbo. There's the Aether Wildfire. He's on Tunic, a resource. Do some more Kanoing. I'm looking through his graveyard there for a second to see what other options he has available. Alright, so he's going to throw out Aether, I check it, it's coming in for 6, so then I pop the Oasis on it, prevent 4, and then I can AB2 with my two floating resources left over. He sees the Oasis, he knows that he's uh, most likely lost, because now his big combo effect doesn't do anything. He has his Lessons, it's coming for 4, I can block 3 of it, I take 1. So as of this point in time, he's only done one instance of Arcane. So if he gets another Aether Wildfire, it's still not going to be doing anything crazy. He comes in with four more damage. I have no resources, so he's done a total of five damage this turn. And then my Crush the Week gets through and it hits. 